Hello, welcome back again to the Retro Shed. Look what we have here. What we've got is a portable five inch black and white TV, radio and cassette recorder. And isn't it lovely? Well, it's not actually, it's covered in shite, but um, yeah, I picked this up a few weeks ago for a couple of quid. And the chap I got it off said that the last time he turned it on, it worked. Um, that was probably a few years ago, and I dread to think what is living inside this thing now. So, as yet, I've not powered this up. I think it's going to need a bit of a clean and a bit of an open up and a dig around to see whether this thing is going to work or whether it's just going to catch fire and blow up. So apparently it's a Benson PTV1 portable TV radio cassette recorder combination unit. Um, on the left hand side here we've got the controls for the television. Uh, it's got a telescopic antenna on top of it. Um, it's got a cassette recorder. Look at that. That's fabulous. Anything living in there? I don't know. I can't tell. Um, on the side, on the right hand side, we've got audio in out and we've got mains in and 12 volts DC. On the front we've got the uh, TV tape radio selector, volume, tone, waveband selector, radio tuner, power, and TV tuner. Looks all pretty straightforward and simple. Before we power this thing up, I think I'm going to have to dig out the vacuum cleaner and give it a good clean and a good poke around inside and see exactly what is going on. What could possibly go wrong? Right, slightly better. I think that's the best poor old Harry's going to do with it. Um, battery box looks clean actually, it doesn't look too bad in there. That lip there is not fitting properly, so I suspect somebody's been digging around in here and not fitted this again properly. Hmm, don't know what I'm going to find, but uh, I think what we'll do, well let's take the covers off and have a look at what's going on inside here. Well, not as bad as I thought it was going to be inside here, actually. Obviously, there's been some spiders living in here, as you can see from the uh, egg sacs that, that are evident. Good job the wife's not in here. On the whole, I was expecting it to be a bit worse. You know what? I don't know what I was expecting, to be honest with you. Proper old school technology this is. Look at this. Looks like the inside of some of my CB radios. Um, I don't know if that tape was on there from factory. I suspect not. Uh, yeah, there's some stuff there that doesn't look factory fitted. I don't know, hard to say really. Uh, what is that? Don't know what that is. Mm, I'm going to have to be careful powering this thing up I think. I can see the uh, the neck of the CRTs there. A lovely little CRT that is. Um, yeah, I'm going to pull this apart a little bit more I think and just do a bit more digging and cleaning. Uh, I'm going to take those knobs off the front as well and give them a good clean in soapy water. I'm probably going to have to do the same with this case. I dread to think what's been living in here all these years. Right, day two. I uh, cleaned up all these knobs last night and as you can see they've come up quite well. I gave them a good soak in hot water and a good scrub with a brush. They're looking pretty good. And I sat and had a thought about how am I going to approach this thing because I can't really see a lot from this side of that board and there's parts of this I really need to get to to clean out. So I thought what I'd do, um, I'll pull it apart as much as I can. So I'm going to take this main board area 
apart and have a dig around underneath and see what's lurking or living under there. And perhaps as this is a 12 volt unit as well as mains, perhaps it's not a good idea to plug it straight into the mains. Perhaps feed it 12 volts. Uh, and if it goes bang, that'll probably <laughs> cause less damage than plugging it into the mains. I don't know if that's flawed thinking or good thinking, I don't know. But I'm going to carry on pulling it apart and let's see what we can find. Definitely been some poking around in here, I think. Um, what did I spot? Yeah, I think it's to be expected, isn't it, because of its age? But I do think someone's had a poke around in here. I mean, what what's happened there? That track has clearly been repaired, hasn't it? Look at that. So yeah, someone's had a poke around in here, <laughs> which is understandable. The thing is very old. So uh, yeah, I continue. That took a bit of scrubbing. There's about 30 years of grime on that Perspex cover there. So what I've done, I've used some uh, quite a, quite a bit of alcohol on it, and used a very non-abrasive cloth. And it hasn't come up too bad. It looks quite nice. But uh, yeah, let's move on to the rest of the fascia. Right, finally I've had some time to uh, carry on with this project. So what I've done today is, um, so I found my variable power supply, I've set it to 12 volts because I did not want to plug mains into this thing. I shall be totally honest with you, I chickened out from plugging mains in, I didn't want to blow it sky high. Uh, what I've currently got is um, 12 volts going into the uh, DC port on the side. And what I found was, after a bit of poking around, it's dead. No, so it's dead. But what I found was, if I apply, it's got a bit of life in it, um, and that's on the radio. That's on VHF, and it's picking up a local Hereford and Worcester station. So if I remove the crocodile clip from the battery negative it dies um, and it continuity appears to be good to this board here i think something's died on this board and i think it's that dodgy looking diode there in the middle of the screen because if i take um this probe here has uh, got a return on it um look if i touch there you go we get a signal if i take that probe onto the other side of that diode, it works. So I suspect something on that board has gone. So I'm gonna to have to strip it down again. I've already pinned it out once. I'm gonna strip down that board and see if I can figure out what it is. But I'm hopeful. Right, I've released that board. And strangely enough, just with the 12 volts in on the DC socket, it sprung back to life, so I suspect I suspect there's something wrong with this board. And looking at the state of it, I'm not surprised. Let me just turn that radio down. Hang on. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up this board with some uh, alcohol, and I'm going to get a hot air gun, and I'm going to reflow all these joints because that that looks a bit ropey to me. So let me reflow those joints. That's proven that the components are good, um, and I suspect we have a loose joint there that does not look good there i don't know what the hell that's supposed to be um but it's a bit of a mess there's a hell of a lot of flux on there i don't know if it was like that from factory or somebody's been messing with it uh but i think it needs a bit of a reflow so i'm just gonna get the hot air gun out and do just that
Right, I've refloated that board. I've got it nice and hot. I've cleaned it up again with a bit of alcohol. Uh, so let's plug 12 volts in and see what we get. Lovely place to go to, opening up after lockdown again. Um, right, that sounds good. I'm just going to remount that board now and put it back. Looks like that did the trick. Probably just a dry joint, to be honest. Right, so I know uh, there's power getting to the board. You can hear the radio. I've flipped this board out and I've gone over it with a fine tooth comb and everything looks good. Um, I've pinned it out with a multimeter. I can't see many, well, I can't see any problems. So here's the moment of truth. Uh, I thought I'd do this on camera. If it blows up, <laughs> you get to witness it. I'm gonna flick this over to, sorry, the, the thing is upside down. It's not my camera. Um, I'm going to flick this over to TV and see if this uh, old tube has got any life in it. You ready? Here we go. Look at that. We have got a working CRT. Now, let's try and tune. It's not going to pick anything up. I don't think it is anyway. No. We've got nothing in the way of analog transmissions around here, I don't think, anymore. I don't know if we have anywhere in the country, actually. But what we have got is UHF in. So I'm really chuffed with that, actually. I'm not going to put my fingers in there. Right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to stick this thing back together again before I do any further testing. Um, I'm going to bolt it back together, put the covers back on, resolder the battery box together, and then I think it's time we fed this CRT a signal. Okay, finally I've put it back together again and I've got to admit it does look a lot better than it did a couple of weeks ago, I'm sure you'll agree. Now, I've tried to tune the telly in and of course there are no analog transmissions anymore so I cannot get a picture on this thing. There's only one thing for it, it's going to have to be an Atari 2600 I think. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the UHF output from the Atari into here, tune it in, and let's see if we can get this old thing working. So after a few days of tinkering around, I've managed to restore it to mm, some some degree of its former glory. I mean, it's still a still a bit scratched and you know a bit faded in places, but you know, hey, it's not bad, is it? It's still working. That's the main thing. Um, the tape deck's been uh, cleaned as well. Uh, the tape does spin up. I haven't got a cassette to actually try it in though, which is a shame. Uh, but from what I can see, everything on it is working. So a bit of soldering, a bit of reflowing, uh, a bit of checking of voltages here and there, a bit of reseating of uh, some wires, a bit of tidying up, and uh, there you go. We have a fully working Benkson PTV1. What do I do with it now? I have no idea. But thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching me pull this thing apart and get it, uh, getting it working again. And we'll catch you again very soon in the retro shed. So take care now. Bye bye.